The Marvel journey begins with the X-Men Chapter 1. Above the torch, Magneto's instrument has been activated, and pure white radiation spreads like flowing water. Seeing that the plan was about to succeed, Magneto didn't have any proud look on his face. Instead, there was a trace of pain in his eyes. He will change the magnetism of the planet, and although this will sacrifice many ordinary people, it is also a fight for the rights of the mutants. Just a few hundred meters away in the clouds, there is an invisible saucer-shaped aircraft hovering. The interior of the aircraft is very luxurious, and there is a huge amount of screen. This scene at the Statue of Liberty is displayed on the screen. That's almost it, Master Norton. Pen Miles opened the hatch and reminded Norton. Got it. Uncle Miles. Norton put down his wine glass and stepped out of the open hatch. Stepping out of the flight machine, Norton locked the location of the Statue of Liberty, then accelerated instantly and flew in front of Magneto. Magneto is worthy of being a hero. When Norton suddenly appeared, he did not panic at all. Instead, he calmly asked, Who are you? Norton Carnegie. The boy replied. While he answered, he waved his hand gently, and the rapidly rotating instrument turned into the most basic atoms. The radiant light disappeared instantly. Magneto's expression suddenly changed and he became furious. Unfortunately, Norton was too fast and he had no time to stop him. You, the plan that had been planned for so long was about to succeed, but was ruined by Norton at the last moment. Magneto almost exploded with anger. Magneto instantly made up his mind. Even if Norton was a mutant, he would never let him go. Norton is wearing a black combat uniform tonight, with a lot of metal equipment on him, especially his belt and combat boots, which are all made of metal. In Magneto's opinion, isn't this a meal delivered to your door? But when he wanted to take action, he found that he was exhausted and couldn't control the magnetic field of these metal equipment at all. This incident made Magneto calm down quickly. You are a mutant too. Why did you stop me? I'm only here for Anna, she's very important to us," Norton replied. While answering, Norton walked over and picked up the Rikshasa girl who collapsed on the ground. And even if I don't stop you, your plan won't succeed," Norton added. As soon as Norton finished speaking, he saw Sabretooth being knocked out of the Statue of Liberty. Magneto definitely knows what this means, the X-Men are out of trouble, and no one can stop them. Magneto, you should confirm the ending of Senator Kelly. I think the professor will definitely give you a satisfactory answer. Before leaving, Norton reminded Magneto again. Norton said this because he didn't want Magneto to blame all the reasons for his failure on him. He didn't want to become an enemy of Magneto. Magneto is a true idealist. He truly regards every mutant as a brother or sister, and this charisma has allowed him to gather a large number of like-minded followers. As a mutant, Norton does not agree with Magneto's philosophy but he has to admit Magneto's personality charm. At the same time, Magneto is also a true hero, a hero who is not bad in terms of strength or means. Being an enemy of a hero is a very troublesome thing, and Norton hates trouble the most. Watching Norton fly away, Magneto ignored the X-Men who climbed up. He found the seriously injured Raven first, and then quickly led the Brotherhood's people away. After Magneto led the people to evacuate, the X-Men also evacuated quickly. Only the ruined Statue of Liberty remains, proving that a great war took place here. As soon as Norton returned to the flight machine, the Rikshasa girl suddenly woke up. This time, the instrument had just started, and Norton rescued her, so the Rikshasa girl's vitality was not greatly lost. Apart from being weak and rude, she was fine. Who are you? Rikshasa asked weakly. You can call me Norton. Norton stroked the Rikshasa girl's forehead and comforted her gently. Did you save me? Rikshasa asked again. That's right, Norton nodded. While speaking, the Rikshasa girl noticed that Norton had no gloves on his hands. Her expression changed instantly, and she struggled to avoid Norton's hands. Norton knew that the Rikshasa girl was worried about hurting him, but he still stroked the Rikshasa girl's cheek and explained confidently. Don't worry, you can't hurt me. Norton definitely knows about Rikshasa's ability. Before coming to take away the Rikshasa girl, they had analyzed that the Rikshasa girl's ability could not hurt him, and they confirmed it again when they touched the Rikshasa girl's forehead just now. Norton did feel the suction from the Rikshasa, but the bright law rune in the ocean of his consciousness only moved slightly to resolve the suction. 
Really? Rikshasa girl still couldn't believe it. Definitely. Norton encouraged. The Rikshasa girl, who has always been troubled by her own powers, really wants to be in close contact with others. The Rikshasa girl gently rubbed Norton's hand and found that Norton was indeed fine. A happy smile suddenly appeared on her face. Enjoying the feeling of close contact, the Rikshasa girl forgot all her worries and fell asleep with a satisfied smile. Norton's flight was very fast. When it returned to Cumberland Island, it was still very early before dawn, and there was no sign of the Rikshasa girl waking up. So Norton had to give up his previous arrangement and take her back to the bedroom. Do you need to call Nina? Master Norton, Penn Miles asked. No, I can do it myself. Norton replied, Uncle Miles, go to bed first and ask them not to wait. We will talk about other things tomorrow. Okay, Master. Miles didn't ask any more questions. Norton did not regard Miles as a butler in his mind, but Miles never forgot his identity. Norton has nothing to do about it, he is not used to it but he can only accept it. As a young man who grew up under a red flag, Norton was not used to this decadent aristocratic life. Even though he had traveled through time for more than 10 years, he still wasn't completely used to it. That's right. Norton is a time traveler who traveled to the famous Carnegie family and became a 12-year-old child and the next generation heir of the Carnegie family. When he first traveled through time, Norton thought the Carnegie family had declined. But after a period of actual experience, he discovered that although this family was not well-known, it was the top family in the United States in terms of assets and influence. Give the simplest example. As the former Steel King family, although the Carnegie family does not hold shares in any listed steel companies, at least half of the world's steel-related companies need to pay patent fees to the Carnegie family. In short, there is only one word, rich. If it were a normal world, Norton would start in TNU. Unfortunately, Norton soon discovered the existence of mutant, and then met Tony Stark as a child. Now Norton is no longer calm. The Marvel Universe is full of troubles. Even if it is confirmed that it is a movie universe, Norton still has no sense of security. Fortunately, Norton not only awakened the X-Gene, but as a time traveler, he also has a standard plug-in, a learning system that can be improved by just learning. As a young man who has money, super ability, and cheats, Norton said he should keep a low profile. In order to live, study in a low-key manner, Norton opened his own learning system. Physics LV4, 23, open black lens bracket chemistry LV4, 14, close black lens bracket open black lens bracket metallurgy LV5, 36, close black lens bracket. Open black lens bracket X genetics LV4, 98, close black lens bracket, elemental dominance LV4, 99. Level 4 in general subjects is almost the limit that practical knowledge can reach. Only the discipline of metallurgy has reached level 5 thanks to the X ability of elemental dominance. Norton level 5 metallurgy has allowed Carnegie Alloys to become the top specialty metal supplier in the United States in less than 10 years. The U.S. military, Shield, Stark Group, etc. are all major customers of Carnegie Alloys. Carnegie Alloy Company is small in scale and not famous, but its influence is no worse than that of Stark Group. Norton's eyes fell on level 4 X genetics. This most important subject currently encountered a bottleneck. This is why Norton took the risk of becoming an enemy of Magneto and went out of his way to rescue the Rikshasa girl. The next morning, the Rikshasa girl's body had recovered, and Norton took her to the mutant academy on the other side of the island. Ever since he learned of the existence of mutants, Norton began to deliberately search for and cultivate mutants. Mutants are scarce resources and their cultivation is of great value. For this purpose, Norton specially acquired the unused Cumberland Island from his family and built Carnegie Mutant College on it. At the same time, the energy of the Carnegie family is mobilized to save mutant children around the world and bring them to Mutant Academy for unified training. Norton, where are we going? The Rikshasa asked happily. Carnegie Mutant Academy, Norton replied. Academy? The smile on the Rikshasa girl's face disappeared instantly. Don't worry, the classmates in the academy are all mutants like us, and most of them, like me, are not afraid of your ability, Norton comforted. Really? Rikshasa didn't quite believe it. She was too afraid of her own ability. Definitely, Norton replied firmly. The morning sun shone on Norton's handsome face, 
making the Rakshasa girl's eyes blurred and she couldn't help but trust him. Just then, a voice interrupted this beautiful moment. Norton, is this Anna? An elegant blonde beauty came over, took the Rakshasa girl's hand and asked. The Rakshasa girl subconsciously withdrew her hand and hid behind Norton. This action had become a conditioned reflex. This is Serena, the teacher of the academy, Norton introduced the Rakshasa girl. Teacher Serena, the Rakshasa girl timidly called. Call me Sister Serena. Catherine held the Rakshasa girl's hand again. Her voice was very gentle, making people involuntarily feel friendly and trustful, so this time the Rakshasa girl did not avoid her. Leave it to me Anna. Serena gently took the Rakshasa girl into her arms. Okay, I'll leave Anna to you to help her integrate into the academy as soon as possible. Norton warned Serena, then turned to Rakshasa and said. Anna, you and Serena go to the academy, and I'll pick you up after school. Yeah. The Rakshasa girl was a little reluctant, but she still didn't refuse. Serena took Rakshasa into the academy, while Norton came to the experimental base behind the academy. As soon as he entered the experimental base, he met an excited John Davidson, the chief researcher of the mutant research base and a top genius in genetics. John's X ability is microscopic vision, which can directly see the gene sequence, which is even more powerful for genetic research. Norton, our guess is correct. Anna's genes are really amazing. As long as we thoroughly study her genes and X ability, our X genetics can make up for the biggest missing piece. John said to Norton excitedly. Looking at John's big dark circles, Yin N decided not to talk about the Rakshasa girl for the time being, otherwise John's current excited state would definitely scare the Rakshasa girl. John, you haven't slept in how many days? Norton asked. I'm not sleepy. John didn't care about this, he was in a state of excitement now. Where's Anna? She. You have to go to bed now. Norton carried John directly to his exclusive lounge. The lounge was specially designed for John. There was nothing except a large bed. As soon as Norton closed the door, hypnotic ability gas began to be released in the room. John's excitement quickly passed, and sleepiness gradually set in. Soon he fell on the bed and fell asleep. Norton glanced at John. Open black lens bracket X genetics LV4, 99, close black lens bracket he has surpassed himself again. As long as he finishes learning John's latest research results, his X genetics will reach 99. This kind of top-notch toolman is so rare that we must not let him tire himself out. The learning system allows Norton to avoid any learning bottlenecks, but it requires a constant stream of new knowledge support. If you have finished learning the existing knowledge and want to continue to make progress, you must either look for new knowledge to learn or research new knowledge and technology yourself. Realistic knowledge is limited, so in the end, you can only study it yourself in any subject. However, there are so many subjects and Norton's energy is limited, so the system derives the master-apprentice function. Yin N students can also enjoy system bonuses, and there are no learning bottlenecks in some subjects. Therefore, the entire Mutant Academy, including teachers and students, are nominally Norton students. After they complete their studies, they will become the best tools. The reason why it is called the Mutant Research Base is not because mutants are studied here, but because all the researchers here are mutants. After Serena brought the Rakshasa girl to the academy, she first introduced the teachers and students above the sixth grade to her. Everyone shook her hand and was not affected by her ex-ability. This discovery made Rikshasa very happy and gave him a sense of belonging for the first time. Living like a normal girl is her biggest wish. Perhaps because once the heart disease was cured, the Rikshasa girl gradually regained some of her girlish nature. Sister Serena, why is my ability ineffective on you? The Rikshasa asked curiously. Because we have greater control over X ability, Serena replied. As long as you complete the basic subjects of the academy, you will be able to fully control your X ability. Then there will be no problem even if you come into contact with ordinary people. Really? The Rikshasa girl was a little disbelieving, but at the same time full of expectations. It's definitely true. Serena's voice was inexplicably infectious. The Rikshasa girl didn't have any doubts, so she couldn't wait to ask, Teacher Serena, when should I start class? At the moment she seemed to regard herself as a member of the academy. Serena nodded without any trace and finally completed the task. 
The X gene is very special. Many details can only be felt by myself. It is difficult for others to study and understand it. It is best to study it yourself. The Rakshasa girl's ability is the key to making up for the shortcomings of the X genetic theory, and there must be no mistakes. Therefore, Rakshasa women need to actively participate in research as researchers. Starting from rescuing Rakshasa, Norton made a series of arrangements to make Rakshasa completely return to Carnegie Mutant College. After dealing with the aftermath, the professor arrived alone in his wheelchair to check on Cerebro. The silver door slowly opened, and a familiar figure came into view. Eric's visit in this way was a bit unexpected from the professor, but it was also reasonable. Magneto is too familiar with Xavier's school. Entering here quietly is almost like going home. The professor was just surprised for a moment, then drove in as if nothing had happened and closed the door. Magneto also turned around. At the moment, his expression was calm. There was no emotion on his face, and there was no sign that he had just experienced a tragic defeat. You failed, old friend, Professor X said first. After hearing the professor's words, Magneto's expression did not change at all. Instead, he frankly admitted his failure. I did fail this time. He eventually followed Norton's advice. After arriving at Xavier's school, I had quietly checked Counselor Kelly's test records. He had to admit that this plan would never succeed from the beginning. However, Magneto is an idealist, and a temporary failure will not shake his will. The professor knew Magneto well and advised again, Don't do this again, Eric. I won't make this mistake again next time, Magneto replied. What you do will only lead mutant into the abyss. The professor continued to advise. Mutants have fallen into the abyss a long time ago. I rescued them from the abyss. Without me, most of them would have died in human laboratories. Magneto's eyes were filled with anger. If all kinds of careerists hadn't been capturing Mutant and using him for experiments, he wouldn't have gradually gone to extremes. Two old friends who are in love with each other cannot convince each other. Before leaving, Magneto warned the professor, You'd better be careful lately, humans are not trustworthy. Last night, Mutant got into a fight on the Statue of Liberty, causing quite a lot of damage. Although the government does not know the reason, the destruction of the Statue of Liberty has touched a sensitive nerve in Washington. Someone will definitely take the opportunity to cause trouble. Magneto has obtained some unfavorable information through Brotherhood's channels, and has also seen the names of many acquaintances. This time, Magneto was not seriously injured. With him in charge, Brotherhood calmly went into hibernation. But Xavier's school is out in the open, there's no way to hide it. This is the reason why Magneto came specially to see the professor. After all, they are old friends and the academy is full of mutants. As for Norton who suddenly appeared last night, both parties made a tacit agreement not to mention it. Norton did not deliberately hide his identity. With the energy of Xavier's school and brotherhood, it was easy to obtain Norton's information. Norton's behavior of saving mutant children over the years has not been concealed and all children are treated equally regardless of their ability. The situation of Carnegie Mutant Academy cannot be hidden from them. Therefore, both the professor and Magneto have always had a good impression of Norton. It seems that what happened last night greatly stimulated the military, Norton laughed. The three orders are not small, but Norton knows that this is just the beginning. The military is definitely not the only one who needs non-magnetic alloys. Norton felt that he should thank Magneto for letting him make a fortune again. The price of non-magnetic alloys was not low. Immediately increase the production of non-magnetic alloys and deploy a backup smelting workshop. The recent orders for non-magnetic alloys will definitely continue to surge, Norton arranged. Okay, boss. Yuna quickly wrote down Norton's arrangements. Anything else? Norton asked. Boom, boom, boom. At this moment, there was a knock on the door. Come in, Norton responded, and then told Yuna, that's it for today. Seeing that it was Penn Myers who came in, Norton stood up and walked over, Uncle Myers. Master, Madam asks you to go back as soon as possible, Payne Miles said. I'll go back right away, Mom called, but Norton didn't dare to delay. He just happened to be finished with his work for the day. The company is not far from home, near Washington, and only takes a few dozen minutes to drive. Originally, their family lived in New York, but where was New York? How dare Norton live in New York? 
so at his strong request, the family moved to Washington. If it weren't for the inconvenience of traveling back and forth, Norton would even want to move directly back to Georgia. Norton's house in Washington is very simple, just a single family villa with a garden. Norton breathed a sigh of relief when he saw Mary taking care of the garden leisurely. So he walked over with a shower full of water. Mom, what happened today? Your father just sent back a message. Many people in the parliament expressed dissatisfaction with mutant today, and some people in the military also want to take action against mutant. Mary's tone was calm and she didn't seem worried at all. The military wants to touch my mutant academy? Norton asked, but his tone was slightly disdainful. Who dares? Mary's voice is not loud, but she is powerful and domineering. Norton has no doubt about this. Norton has rescued a large number of mutants. This matter is not a secret among high-level officials in the United States, but no one has ever dared to make irresponsible remarks, and no one dares to have any ideas about him. The real rulers of the United States have always been big conglomerates and big capitalists, and the Carnegie family is one of them, and they are still the top handful. On the surface, whether they are members of parliament or high-ranking officials, they look glamorous, but in fact they are just wage earners. Whose wage earner dares to take care of the boss's family affairs? Don't want to do it anymore. Magneto and Professor X have gathered a large number of mutants, and the military will consider them threats and destabilizing factors. Norton also gathered a large number of mutants, but no one considered Norton to be a destabilizing factor, and no one regarded the Carnegie family as a threat. After all, as one of the largest vested interests, it is impossible for the Carnegie family to rebel on their own and overthrow the ruling order that is beneficial to them. After cleaning the pruned branches and leaves, Norton asked again, Mom, Dad came to you specifically to send a message. This is not the only news, right? Mary took a roundabout way and said directly, The military has asked your father for help. They want the mutant gene bank in your hands. Mutant gene pool? Norton weighed the pros and cons in his mind. The gene bank is both important and unimportant. It cannot be released easily, and there is no need to keep it strictly confidential. It is just a gene bank and has little research value. The military has invested so many resources and studied it for such a long time. How many qualified results have it produced? As far as Norton knows, there is none. The two that were solved by Wolverine are only semi-finished products. They have not passed the test of time, and it is difficult to say whether they are stable or not. Finally, Norton made a decision. You can give it to them, but you can't give it to them for free. I want all the military's mutant research information, including the mutant gene bank held by the military. The transaction with the military went smoothly without any problems. Norton paid more than a thousand genetic samples and received hundreds of genetic samples from the military, as well as a large amount of research information. The number of X gene samples is less than expected, but this is normal. The number of mutants is not large to begin with. The global probability of awakening is no more than 1 in 100,000, and the valuable X ability is even less. Hundreds of valuable X gene samples have been accumulated by the military for decades. Of the more than a thousand genetic samples provided by Norton, most of them have no practical value for X ability. Most of the hundreds of genetic samples provided by the military have strong combat capabilities or special effects. The genetic samples populate the gene bank, and after the research data is digested, the basic database of the laboratory is supplemented. This transaction can only be considered as a loss, not as much profit as expected. At least Norton doesn't think it's profitable. These things can only enrich the foundation, but are not enough to bring X genetics to level 5. Norton was a little disappointed, but this was also expected. The key to breaking through the fifth level of X genetics still lies with the Rikshasa girl. Unfortunately, the Rikshasa girl is still studying and will not be able to participate in the research in a short time. Don't worry, it's only 2000 years now, and there are still several years before Marvel becomes popular. Norton could only comfort himself this way. Despite being disappointed, Norton also received some surprises, such as Space-Time Science LV-3, 1. The military's research data on space-like X ability allowed Norton's space-time knowledge, which originally only had two levels, to unexpectedly break through to three levels. Moreover, after breaking through the third level of space-time science, Norton has been given a very special ability, spatial vision. 
Spatial vision allows Norton to intuitively observe some spatial phenomena, such as traces of spatial movement, spatial fluctuations, etc. Unfortunately, Norton's third-level space and time science is mainly about space knowledge, and less about time. The space vision cannot metamorphosis into the time vision, let alone leverage the power of space and time. Where can I find knowledge about time? As soon as he thought about this question, an image of a bald head appeared in Norton's mind. There are many hidden bosses on the planet, but only the Sorcerer Supreme has enough time and knowledge. Unfortunately, Norton doesn't dare to meet Sorcerer Supreme yet. He is not sure what Sorcerer Supreme's attitude is towards this uncertain factor of his. Norton, on this day, Yuna suddenly found Norton in a hurry. Norton stopped the experiment he was doing and asked, Why are you so anxious? Today the president was assassinated by a mutant in the White House. Yuna replied, her tone a little anxious. After all, the president is the nominal leader of the United States. His assassination is not a trivial matter at any time, not to mention that it was Mutant who did it this time. Moreover, it is not a secret that Norton opened a Mutant college, and the Carnegie family cannot stay away from it. What did the Mutant do? Norton asked. Normally a Mutant wouldn't be able to do such a thing. The hand of a teleporting Mutant, Yuna replied. Naturally, the process of the President's assassination could not be hidden from the Carnegie family. Ordinary people could not figure out what was being assassinated. Yuna knew at a glance that it was a teleporting mutant. Hearing this answer, Norton instantly guessed the person who did it. Did Stryker do it again? This is not difficult to guess, neither Professor. The most important thing is that in the original plot, Stryker did this. Magneto was not caught this time, but Stryker still chose to attack mutant. Where did he get the confidence? Needless to say, the Hidden Brotherhood is not easy to deal with even the Xavier's school that is exposed. Without the information provided by Magneto, Stryker himself would never have been able to figure out the reality of Xavier's school. Did the military give him greater support? Norton only thought of this possibility. This is not a simple X-Men world. The power of the military must not be underestimated. It is not difficult for them to figure out the detailed information of Xavier's school. Why is the military supporting Stryker? Yuna asked. Magneto has put too much pressure on the military. Stryker can easily convince them as long as he is dealing with Magneto. Norton replied. Magneto's ability is too buggy in modern warfare, and there is absolutely no problem in influencing the outcome of a local war. With the poor nature of the U.S. military, they would never allow such an awesome person to exist outside their control. They covet Magneto's power very much. Let's go. Let's go watch the fun. Norton put aside his work in the laboratory. After more than a year, I have studied everything that needs to be studied, and it's time to go out and relax. Returning to Washington with Yuna, Norton met with several people one after another and explained the matter clearly that Carnegie Mutant College had nothing to do with it. This is not difficult to explain. The truth may only be unclear to those on the president's side. Others are more or less aware of what the assassination is about. Norton is willing to explain, just to show his attitude. Then it was just a matter of watching from the sidelines. This time, Norton only planned to watch the fun and not get directly involved. It's just a striker, Magneto and Professor X can definitely handle it. Norton just wants to know, without Magneto's trump card, what will Stryker do? After all, this time he has to deal with not only Professor X, but also a more difficult Magneto. To Norton's surprise, before he was ready to watch the fun, the professor unexpectedly came to his door. Professor, come in. Norton invited the professor into the room. Handing the coffee brought by Yuna to the professor, Norton asked, Professor, why are you free to come to me today? I'm here because of what happened yesterday, the professor said bluntly. I didn't do this, Norton replied directly and explained clearly. For me, it is easier and less troublesome to replace the president with an obedient one than to assassinate the president. Norton's reason was so strong that the professor didn't know how to answer the question. In fact, before he came, the professor knew that Norton did not do this, because Norton had no need to do this. But he still came, even if there was a 1 in 10,000 chance, he would not let it go. This matter is related to mutant survival, and it may make mutant situation worse. When the professor was halfway through speaking, Norton interrupted him. Professor, I believe you can solve this problem. Okay, Norton. 
The professor understood Norton's position and did not continue to persuade him. However, before leaving, he still requested. If you get any useful information, please tell me. Norton really knows a lot, but this time Stryker is not alone in doing things. The things involved are very complicated, and Norton can't explain them directly. So after sending the professor out personally, Norton still warned. Professor, be careful. Assassinating the president may not be their goal. How? Norton asked Yuna, watching the professor's leaving figure. He told the truth, and he didn't try to invade our brains during the whole process, Yuna replied. Yuna's ability is psychic protection, and its main effects are psychic defense and identifying lies. With this ability, she secured her position as the general manager of Carnegie Alloy Company and the captain of the Carnegie Mutant Academy action team. As expected of a professor, Norton was not surprised by this. The professor is determined and has his own ideas and persistence. He will not read other people's thoughts unless absolutely necessary. Unfortunately, precisely because of his ideas and persistence, it was extremely difficult to recruit professors, and with him here, Norton didn't even bother to make plans for the mutants at Xavier's school. Don't pay attention to professor, just keep an eye on Stryker, Norton ordered. Chapter 6 Stryker's method is simple, but very effective. Taking advantage of the time of the president's assassination, he hyped up the mutant threat theory, provoked conflicts between ordinary people and mutants, and expanded public opinion. Then use public opinion to put pressure on the president and force him to agree to his action plan. During this period, they also used the influence of Washington to suppress Xavier's school, causing the professors to focus on one thing and not the other, wasting a lot of time. By the time the professor found the president's assassin, Stryker had quietly completed the layout. Just like the original plot, when the professor sends people to find the murderer, Stryker takes action boldly. Stryker knew very well that he would not be able to hide the fact that he framed Mutant for long. The professor may not attack him directly due to his status, but Magneto doesn't have so many scruples and will definitely not let him go. So he used his own as bait to lure out Magneto, and trapped Magneto with a trap made of non-magnetic alloy. Then, before the professor got the news, he used Magneto as bait to lure the professor into a trap and catch the professor. In one day, two big guys, Magneto and Professor X, actually fell into Stryker's trap? What cards does Stryker hold? Just a master of fantasy. This series of operations makes my scalp numb. It's amazing. Sure enough, the power of hatred is unlimited. Norton couldn't help but sigh. Even without Magneto as his trump card, Stryker still captured the key Professor X and even trapped Magneto. Magneto is just trapped, and Stryker knows very well that it is still not easy to kill Magneto. So he turned his gun and took advantage of the darkness to launch an attack on Professor Xavier's school. What a coincidence is that this time, Logan is still the only one left in the academy, and the rest are a bunch of half-grown children. The ending this time remained unchanged. Some students were caught and some escaped. The inertia of the world is so strong. It has obviously changed so much, but in the end it ended up with the same ending. Norton would have found it hard to believe it if he hadn't seen it with his own eyes. Are we going to save those children? Yuna asked. No need, the professor will rescue them, just continue to monitor them, Norton replied. The imprint of Professor X is very deep on these children, and Norton does not want to compete with the professor. As long as those children's lives are not in danger, Norton can't interfere. After all, Stryker's people are not the only ones who have invaded Xavier's school. Xavier's school's flight machine and other technical information did not fall into Stryker's hands. The subsequent plot is similar to what Norton understands. Jean and Storm, who were looking for Nightcrawler, returned and met up with Logan and others who had escaped, and then unexpectedly met Magneto. He is Colonel William Stryker. He has only one purpose in attacking the Academy, and that is to get the brainwave strengthening device, or to get the model and copy one, Magneto said. But the brainwave strengthening device requires a professor to operate it, Chin asked. Stryker captured Charles. Magneto said. The atmosphere suddenly solidified, with Jean and Storm looking terrified, but Wolverine was the only one who didn't know why. When the brainwave strengthening device works, it will connect Charles's brain with everyone. If he focuses his consciousness strongly enough on a certain person, or a special group, such as a mutant, it can kill all our mutants instantly, Magneto explained. 
Norton would scoff at this if he were here. The only ones that can be killed are ordinary people, ordinary normal people, or ordinary mutants. There are too many ways on earth to defend against this kind of attack, and there are even many bosses who can directly stop Charles. Otherwise, how could Charles have survived to this day? Definitely, Chin and the others definitely don't know this, and even Magneto may not know it. After all, at this point in time, the only supernatural force active on the earth is mutant. How does Stryker know where the brainwave strengthening device is? Storm asked. The brainwave strengthening device has been there for decades. There are many people who know about it. Moreover, I helped Charles make it decades ago. The principle is not a secret. With today's technology, Stryker can't even build one by himself. Difficult, Magneto replied. Norton can build one himself, and the function is more powerful, but it is meaningless. After experiencing it once, Norton found that its shortcomings were serious. The brainwave strengthening device can also be used to deal with the weak. Once you face the strong, it is equivalent to putting your fatal flaw directly in front of others, allowing them to be slaughtered. Soon Chin and the others figured out Stryker's plan, and also got the location of Stryker's base from Nightcrawler's mind. The next step is simple, a group of people find Stryker's base, and then rush into the base to save people. In the process, Wolverine regained her memory, Jean also rescued Scott, and the other children were also successfully rescued. When Magneto found the professor, he still came up with a trick. Stryker used his son Master Illusion to control Professor X and let Professor X kill all mutants through the brainwave strengthening device. After Magneto found the professor, he did not immediately destroy the brainwave strengthening device, nor did he wake up the professor. He turned Mystique into Stryker and controlled the professor in the same way, except that the people Magneto wanted to kill were all humans. Do you feel it? Yuna. Norton suddenly looked at Yuna. A silver ring engraved with a mysterious pattern was shining on his hand. This is a spiritual protection ring. Engraved on it are the spiritual protection runes condensed by Yuna, which can provide spiritual defense effects. There is a tyrannical consciousness that is invading our brains. Yuna replied. How strong? Norton asked. Yuna waited in her mind, and then replied. It is enough to kill ordinary mutants, but it is ineffective against mutants condensed with law runes, and it is also ineffective against our academy's spiritual barrier. What about ordinary people? General psychic defense items can resist it. The professor has been famous for a long time. Basically, any force with some background has its own psychic defense methods. Norton took off the ring on his hand, his psychic defense disappeared, and he immediately felt the vast psychic power. Powerful. Dot and fragile. Norton had a feeling that even if he didn't know how to use psychic attacks, he could still pierce through this vast psychic power. But Norton didn't do that. Feeling the professor's psychic power, Norton had almost guessed the outcome. Even without the Rikshasa girl, the ending has not changed. Space-time science LV3, 50. Norton didn't expect that just watching the excitement would lead to unexpected gains. Confirming the existence of world inertia actually increased the progress of space and time by 50. The most important thing is that the 50 progress has made the spatial vision stronger, and you can see the vague plot trajectory, or the trajectory of destiny. This is the ability that Norton only discovered when he saw the professor again. The spatial vision cannot yet see the detailed future, and can only judge that the professor's fate has not changed. This time it was still the professor who took the initiative to find Norton, but this time he did not come alone, but also brought Storm and Scott to see Norton. It seems that this incident has dealt a big blow to the professor. Norton could see that professor ability had become stronger, but some of the sparkle in his eyes was missing. The fact that the professor brought Storm and Scott to see him was enough to explain a lot of problems. It seems you have successfully solved the problem, Norton said with a smile. Maybe it was Norton's words or smile that irritated Scott. Scott shouted angrily. You call this smooth? Chin. Scott. The professor interrupted Scott. The professor's words were still very effective. Although Scott was still angry, he still put down his arms, shut up and stepped aside. Sorry. Jean's departure made Scott a little emotional. I apologize to you on his behalf, the professor explained to Norton. It doesn't matter, Norton waved his hand nonchalantly. 
he has vaguely seen the plot trajectory of Scott, a dying man, and Norton is too lazy to get to know him. Why did the professor come to see me this time? Norton looked at the professor and asked directly. I need your help, Norton. The children need your protection. Xavier's school can no longer keep them safe, the professor pleaded. It can be seen that the professor's energy has indeed been exhausted, otherwise with his pride, he would not be able to take the initiative to admit that he is not good. Before Norton could answer, Storm and Sku first objected, No, professor. Before the two of them could finish speaking, the professor stopped them. Scott, Storm. Scott and Storm did not listen to him obediently this time and tried their best to argue. Norton was not interested in listening to their argument, so he refused. Professor, I can't promise you this. There is no need for you to entrust your students to me. It's never the school that protects those children, but you yourself. As long as you, Professor, are still alive, no one will dare to harm them at all. Definitely, except for crazy people like Stryker. Norton does covet the mutant kids from Xavier's school. Their abilities are quite good and have great research value. But he never thought of taking them in. Because as long as the professor is alive, it will be difficult to completely subdue these children. Not only because of the professor's personal charm, but also because of the mysterious influence of fate. This is not Norton's conjecture. Regardless of channels or information, the Carnegie family is far superior to the professor's Xavier's school, but when it comes to becoming a child of a professor's student, none of Norton has successfully been admitted to the Carnegie Mutant Academy. The professor returned disappointed. He failed to achieve his original intention, but he also got Norton's promise that Norton would protect those children when necessary. After watching the professor leave, Norton also left Washington with Yuna and took the flight all the way north. Norton, what are we doing here? Yuna asked standing by the lake. Norton looked at the calm lake and replied, Look at Jean Grey. Isn't Chen dead? She's buried in this lake. At this point, Yuna suddenly realized something. She's not dead. She had seen Chin submerged in floods through satellite before. If she hadn't perceived the familiar and manic consciousness at the bottom of the lake, it would have been difficult for Yuna to believe that Chin was not dead. How could the host of the Phoenix Force be killed by a small flood? Norton explained. Norton couldn't see through, but he could clearly feel that there was an unprecedented tyrannical energy hidden at the bottom of the lake. This energy was far stronger and more violent than he expected. And this energy contains a powerful will to destroy. There is no doubt that this powerful energy is the Phoenix Force that represents destruction. The Phoenix Force was still there, so it was naturally impossible for Chin to die. Therefore, Jean Grey most likely fell into a deep sleep because she was not used to awakening's Phoenix Force. What is Phoenix Force? Yuna asked. The Phoenix Force is the embodiment of the will to destroy, one of the most powerful forces in the universe. Norton explained. Norton felt that the Phoenix Force was still dormant, and there was still a long way to go before it fully awakened. Let's go. Norton turned around and left without any hesitation. Aren't you going to take her away? Yuna was a little surprised. What's the use of bringing back uncontrollable power? Norton replied. This trip was not in vain. This Phoenix Force made Norton realize that his power was still very weak. The fourth-level elemental master, like Professor X and Magneto's abilities, appears to be powerful, but is actually fragile. Only by reaching level 5 and further metamorphosis of X ability can one barely be called a strong person. The elemental master has the potential of level 5, but in order to reach level 5, X genetics needs to reach level 5 first. Returning to Cumberland Island Mutant Academy, Norton found Selina and asked about the Rikshasa girls' study progress. Anna will be able to complete the basic course in one month, Serena replied. One month. Norton glanced at the Rikshasa girl who was studying hard in the classroom and nodded with satisfaction, not bad. It took just over a year to complete the basic course, much faster than Norton expected. Obviously the Rikshasa girl is eager to solve the problem of her own uncontrollable ability. Anna is very smart and studies very hard. She devotes almost all her energy to studying and is the hardest working student in the entire school. Serena was also full of praise for the Rikshasa girl. Norton can understand the Rikshasa girl. Obsession is a very powerful force, sometimes stronger than hatred. The Rikshasa girl's obsession is obviously that she cannot control her ex-ability. 
The Rikshasa girls' learning progress exceeded expectations, so Norton made arrangements in advance. Selina, this month you will take her to familiarize herself with the laboratory. Once she successfully condenses the law runes, she will immediately participate in the research. I know. Serena nodded in agreement. After completing the basic course, condensing the law runes, and being able to fully control their own abilities, every student must choose an advanced course. Either enter the laboratory, continue learning, and become a researcher in the future, or enter the training ground, learn combat skills, and join the action team in the future. This is a choice that every student in the academy must make, and Rikshasa girl is no exception. But because of the special ability of the Rikshasa girl, Norton determined her choice direction in advance. Norton had already told Rikshasa about this, and she did not resist it. She did not like fighting, and her personality was not suitable for fighting. Most people outside think that the X gene is a mutated gene, but we don't think so. In the X genetics of our college, the X gene is a key and the fulcrum that leverages the world's laws. X ability is the result of leveraging the world's laws through the X gene. At the end of the talk, Norton asked a question. Anna, why are most of mutants' X abilities uncontrollable? Because ability and will are not in balance. Rikshasa gave the answer instantly. Because she has suffered from the uncontrollable ability for a long time, she knows a lot about this issue. What is the working principle of the law rune? Anchor X ability in the soul, get rid of the restrictions of the X gene, and form a relative balance, Rikshasa girl quickly replied. Norton, why is it that after condensing the law rune, the strength of X ability is completely fixed and cannot be changed? Rikshasa asked. This is the question I want to talk about today. Norton did not give the Rikshasa girl a direct answer, but asked a question. What happens when you add a weight to a balance scale? The scales will be thrown off balance. Yes, the scales will lose balance. Norton explained, only when an absolute balance is achieved can we continue to increase the amount. Ability and will only have two points. It is impossible to form a completely stable state, and naturally it cannot continue to improve. Am I the third point? The Rikshasa girl immediately realized something. The hope for the third point lies with you, and your X ability is the key to finding the third point. Norton nodded affirmatively. Hearing Norton's affirmative answer, the Rikshasa girl was not sad, but asked curiously, What is the third point? Energy. Norton replied. Energy? The Rikshasa girl didn't quite understand. It is not ordinary energy such as wind, fire, electricity, and light, but the energy consumed when leveraging the law. This energy cannot be detected by instruments, nor can it be felt when used, and there is no direct evidence of its existence, Norton explained. Norton has been studying the consumption issue of X ability, but there has been no progress. Many X abilities seem to be completely cost free. For example, Scott's Cyclops can be played all the time, Wolverine's self healing is also permanent, and there are many other examples. Even if I feel tired occasionally, it is just a tired heart. Only when Rikshasa absorbs X ability do they look truly exhausted. Norton solemnly said to the Rikshasa girl, I named this energy law energy, and the only person who can find it is you. The reason why Norton is 100% certain that law energy exists is because X genetics has been unable to break through the bottleneck and reach level 5. Norton, I will help you find the energy of law. The Rikshasa woman solemnly promised Norton. I believe you. The next experiment will be led by you, and I will fully cooperate with you. Norton held Rikshasa's hand and released the self-protection of the law rune, allowing Rikshasa to successfully absorb his ability. After condensing the law rune, Rikshasa has a detailed understanding of her X ability, and can clearly control the process of using the ability. For this reason, it is still a huge amount of project for the Rikshasa girl to analyze the absorbed law energy, which requires repeated experiments. For more than half a year, in order to cooperate with Rikshasa's experiments, Norton was absorbed into ability at least 10 times a day. Fortunately, the Rikshasa girl only absorbed law energy from Norton and did not absorb the life force. Otherwise, Norton might not be able to bear it. After condensing the law runes, the law energy is carried by the runes. Before condensing the law runes, the law energy is mostly carried by the life force, Norton speculated in his mind. Norton also tried to find someone else to replace him. Anyway, 
Rikshasa only needs to analyze law energy, and the type of ability does not matter. But it was quickly discovered that this was not possible. The weaker the ability absorbed, the harder it was for the Rikshasa girl to clearly feel the law energy, and the analysis speed was seriously reduced. So Norton had to do it by himself. Fortunately, the efforts of more than half a year were not in vain, and Rikshasa girl finally produced complete results. Although it is only preliminary results, it is enough. When Rikshasa completed the last theory, Norton's X genetics naturally reached LV5. Open black lens bracket law vision close black lens bracket ability born from level 5 X genetics. Not only can it observe its own condensed law runes in more detail, but it can also directly observe external laws. What a mess, no clue. This was Norton's feeling when he first observed the law of the outside world. External laws are mixed, and countless laws are blended together, making it impossible to distinguish a single law. The only clear feeling is that of, active, the law on the earth is extremely active, but the energy is extremely silent, so that it is easier to pry the law than to control the energy. The law of leveraging is an accidental factor, and most of it cannot be copied. Only by controlling energy can it be universal. No wonder so many superheroes and supervillains are born. Norton quickly turned his attention back to his body and carefully observed his law runes. In the past, in Norton's perception, the composition of the law rune was personal will and X ability. Now under law's vision, Norton finally figured out. X ability is a mixture of information and energy. No wonder Nadi is able to absorb and use other people's X abilities. There is no need to add anything else, you only need to separate the law information and the law energy, which are the two basic points. Coupled with personal will, a stable triangle structure is formed. As soon as the triangular structure is formed, the law rune becomes stable instantly. Elemental Master LV4, 99, also naturally becomes, Elemental Master LV5, 1. It seems that it has only improved a little, but there is a qualitative difference between level 5x and level 4. Both the control strength and the control range have been upgraded to a new level. In addition, the fifth level Elemental Master has also derived a new ability, Elemental Furnace. This ability is very simple and crude. Elements with lower proton numbers than iron can directly synthesize iron through complete fusion reactions and release massive amounts of energy. Elements with a higher number of protons than iron can directly generate iron through complete fission and release a corresponding amount of energy. Really rub a nuclear bomb with your hands. Definitely, this is just the most basic. Synthesizing other elements is also not a problem. Turning stone into gold and water into oil is no longer a fantasy. Norton reached out, grabbed a ball of water, and decomposed it into atomic groups composed of hydrogen, oxygen and other elements. Then the energy is released and the atomic cluster turns into an iron bead. Iron beads energy absorb and turn into pure silver, continue energy absorbing and turn into pure gold. Norton cannot directly control the energy released in nuclear reactions, but it can limit it within a certain range. This range should be within the so-called, melting pot. Feeling the majestic energy in the elemental furnace, Norton couldn't help but think of. This elemental furnace can not only be used to create, but it can also be used to attack with destructive power that can destroy the world. The lethality of high-energy particles is not small. Yuna please call. A prompt sounded suddenly, interrupting Norton's thoughts. Connected. Yuna's holographic projection appears next to Norton. Yuna, what big thing happened today? Norton asked. Normally, Yuna would not directly call the laboratory to disturb him. Norton, look at this news. Yuna gave Norton a TV channel. Okay. Norton plugged in the live news. The content of the live broadcast was not earth-shattering news, but a press conference, at which the Worthing Laboratory announced that it had found a solution to the mutant gene. This live TV broadcast made Norton instantly recall the relevant plot. Is the plot of X-Men 3 about to begin? Is Chin going to wake up soon? Norton thought of Chin Gray sleeping in the lake. Less than a year is far from enough time for the Phoenix Force to completely awakening. If Scott hadn't woken her up, she would have definitely continued to sleep. However, even the Phoenix Force that is not completely awakening is enough to allow Jean Grey to exert her level 5 strength. Moreover, the incompletely awakening Phoenix Force may explode at any time, 
and the fully exploded Phoenix Force will definitely have the power to destroy the world. Although in the original plot, the Phoenix Force did not break out in the end, this may not be the case in reality. Norton decided not to take the blame, let her be killed by the plot. Compared to Chin, Norton is more concerned about the little boy named Jimmy. He wants to know what is his principle of suppressing the X-gene? Yuna, keep an eye on the Worthing Laboratory. I want to see their antidote, Norton ordered Yuna. Anytime, Yuna replied. Whether through the channels of the Carnegie family or arrangements by the action team, entering the Worthing Laboratory is a piece of cake. Don't be too showy, Norton warned before hanging up the phone. The experiment has been completed. X-genetics and elemental mastery have both reached level 5, and Norton just wants to go out for a walk. But before leaving the laboratory, Norton was stopped by John again. John spoke so fast that he didn't know what he was talking about. At the moment John was pale and had thick dark circles under his eyes. He had been awake for at least two days, but his expression was fanatical and his eyes were very energetic. In this state, John only sees experiments, and it won't work for anyone. Norton had no choice but to stop. Okay. John, please speak slowly. Okay. John collected his thoughts and said, I found that Anna's X ability is incomplete. It can only absorb and release law energy at the same time. It cannot store law energy and lacks a method to utilize law energy. I know that. Norton nodded, waiting for John's next words. John continued. Then I searched all over the gene bank and finally found Mystique's gene. Her X gene ability is simulation. It can not only simulate appearance, but also genes, including X gene. If you can simulate the X gene, you can simulate law energy with a high probability. Then what? Norton asked. I found that Anna's X gene is very compatible with Mystique's X gene. The two can completely complement each other. John stopped here. Norton saw that John was not here to discuss with him, so he asked, So? What do you want? I want Mystique. John finally said his purpose. Why didn't you say you wanted Magneto? Norton gave him a straight look. Speaking of Mystique, Norton suddenly thought that there was indeed an opportunity to conquer Mystique recently. Magneto is fine too, I don't mind it. John didn't know whether he was pretending to be stupid or just being dumbfounded. Go to sleep, there is everything in your dreams. Seriously, Mystique has no chance at all. Mystique is not a little girl. She has been in the world for decades. It is no less difficult to conquer than Magneto, but... Nothing. John's eyes became intense, but there may be a good opportunity recently. When? Just wait. When the time comes, I will naturally bring her back. After chatting with John for a long time, the sky had darkened. Norton took advantage of the darkness to take a flight to the west coast. In just half a day, Yuna had already prepared everything. In the early hours of that night, Norton and Yuna quietly entered Devil Island, which was once the strictest prison and is now the Worthing Laboratory. The guards are quite tight and the sentries are responsible, but unfortunately they are completely useless against Norton and the others. Illusions, hypnotic ability, invisibility, and even space movement, Norton and the others have many ways to enter the laboratory silently. When Norton and Yuna entered Jimmy's room, Jimmy was already asleep. Without disturbing Jimmy, Norton quietly walked to the bed. There is indeed a depressing feeling, but it is just repression, Norton has not completely lost the feeling of X ability. The elements can still be controlled, decomposition and synthesis are no problem, and the elemental furnace can still be used. After a few simple tests, Norton calculated the approximate data. The efficiency is probably reduced by about 10%. After the test was over, Norton and Yuna left here quietly without leaving any traces. They only took away a small amount of Jimmy's genetic samples and, antidote, samples from the laboratory. After returning to the flight machine, Norton asked. Yuna, the team members should have all been tested, right? What were the results? I did arrange for team members to test. Without the X ability that condenses the law rune, Jimmy can completely suppress it. Once the law rune condenses, Jimmy's suppression effect is greatly reduced up to 50%, Yuna replied. After Norton returned, Jimmy's genetic samples and antidote samples were immediately delivered to John's hands. Such an interesting sample immediately attracted John's attention. Just the next day, John came up with preliminary analysis results. This little boy named Jimmy is also a mutant. 
his ability should be called gene suppression, which specifically manifests itself in the suppression of unstable gene segments. The X gene is also an unstable gene segment, so it is naturally within its suppression range. The core of ability of ordinary mutants is the X gene, so it will be completely suppressed, while the core of our ability is the rune of law, and the X gene only plays a supporting role, so it will only be partially suppressed. In addition, Jimmy's ability only suppresses unstable genes, rather than eliminating them. Therefore, the antidote from Worthing Laboratory is also time-effective and is not permanently effective as they advertise. Norton understands this approach. Under normal circumstances, maintenance medicines are definitely more profitable than immunity medicines, but mutants' antidote is an exception. The mutant issue is highly hyped. In fact, the total number of mutants in the entire United States does not exceed 5,000. How many copies of their antidote can be sold if it is not packaged as an immunity medicine and marketed to ordinary people? A few days later, Norton received another good news. Mystique Raven was accidentally arrested and was held in a mobile prison by the government. Do you want to rescue her? Yuna asked. She also knew that John was plotting against Raven. Now is not the time. Just send someone to keep an eye on the mobile prison where Mystique is. Be careful and don't let Magneto find out. Norton ordered. Raven was captured in the Worthing Laboratory. Magneto has been recruiting mutants recently. Do they want to attack the Worthing Laboratory? Yuna quickly guessed Magneto's intention. To be precise, attack the antidote, Norton corrected. Recently, the mutant issue has become a hot topic, and there are even rumors of mandatory injection. In reality, this place is just a hype by the shareholders behind Worthing Laboratory, all for the purpose of selling drugs. Even selling drugs is not their main purpose. Using this wave of public opinion to increase the stock price is their main purpose. The real bosses of the military and political parties have never regarded the mutants, who numbered only a few thousand, as a serious threat. The point is that completely wiping out the mutants won't do them any good either. There was no need for Norton to investigate this matter. The Carnegie family had already been informed before the operation. All wars and the elimination of mutants were all created by Magneto himself. But Magneto also had to do this. The emergence of the antidote has indeed made many mutants' hearts wander. If Magneto does not take action, the hearts of Brotherhood will be scattered. Xavier's school, because of Chin's return and Scott's disappearance, has no energy to take care of these things. Magneto moved a little faster than Norton expected, and found Raven in just a few days. Magneto's entire rescue process was not able to escape the surveillance of the spiritual eye, and was completely controlled by Norton. Thanks for watching.